Hello, I'm Mick Cornett, the mayor of Oklahoma City, and this is the Mayor's Magazine. Thank you for joining us this month. As we've done in each of the past nine years, we have decided that the February Mayor's Magazine show should be mainly comprised of the State of the City address that was given last month. In that regard, here's the State of the City address from January 24, 2013 at the Cox Convention Center. We will be spending the next few minutes discussing what's happened over the last 12 months and what's going to happen over the next 12 months. And sometimes it's interesting to reflect back on what was accomplished in 2012 and what was not accomplished in 2012. For instance, I was thinking that 2012 would be the year that I convinced my mother she might be happier if she left her house and moved into a retirement center. And I note that although that was a goal of mine, at the end of the year, not only was she still in her house, but that she had bought new carpet. <laughs> the takeaway there is that some goals get accomplished, some don't, and you just push them forward into the next calendar year. Um, we simply cannot discuss 2012 without me showing you a picture of my new grandbaby. I know. This is Fern. I had just given her an update on MAPS 3. You can see that Fern is very excited. Fern is kind of a unique name. I find it interesting that my two granddaughters, Fern and Lily, are both named after plants. And ever the opportunist, I am claiming it makes me the greenest mayor in America. Again, welcome to the State of the City Address. Like in the past, I have worked on this speech off and on for a couple of months. But when I was going over it just in the last 48 hours, it seemed like I'd put a lot of numbers in there, as if you all are going to take notes and I'm going to come back and give you a test later. And I was trying to think to myself, why did I put so many numbers in there? But you have probably heard me refer to these times that we're going through so many times as this is the golden age. Or you've heard people talk about the renaissance that Oklahoma City is experiencing. And sometimes it seems like things are going so well that there's almost a need to validate it with metrics or, or outside sources. And so there are going to be a, quite a few numbers that are coming up in the next few minutes. But I hope one of your takeaways is this, that yes, things are good, things are happening for us, and so we should enjoy it, we should appreciate it, and we should learn from it because we know it will not last it forever. But we need to make a lot of things happen while we can. Let's begin by putting the city's timeline in perspective. 2013, that's 124 years since our great-grandparents drove a stake into the ground on this very spot and other spots nearby during the land run. It's been 103 years since Oklahoma City became the state capital. It's been 85 years since oil was discovered at Southeast 59th Street. It's been 71 years since Tinker Air Force Base began operations. 31 years since Penn Square Bank failed. 20 years since the passage of MAPS. 18 years since the bombing of our federal building. 12 years since the passage of MAPS for Kids eight years since the NBA arrived, and just over three years since the passage of MAPS 3. Time flies, doesn't it? Think about this. If you're 15 years old and you live in Oklahoma City, you probably think we've always had an NBA team. You probably think the ballpark has always been downtown. And you probably think the river has always had water. In the grand scheme of things, in the grand look at our city's timeline, these are relatively new events. But with each passing year, the generation that made that happen, and that's you, must realize all we're really doing is setting the stage for greater things to come. So when those 15-year-olds take over, and it's going to be sooner than we'd like to admit, they are in turn creating a city that we cannot even dream about today. It's a lot to ponder. 
If you see new faces in the audience, that's to be expected. According to the Census Bureau, our population growth is currently twice its traditional rate. Now what that means is every month, over 2,000 new people are moving into the Oklahoma City metro. 2,000. The city's population is now 610,000 or so. The metro is at about 1.3 million. And you have seen signs of the city's growth at nearly every turn. Seemingly all of our energy companies are expanding their bu buildings and their campuses. We have thousands of new housing units and several new hotels, especially downtown, are under construction. In fact, in 1999, we had under 400 hotel rooms downtown. Now we have over 2,000. And there's another 600 either under construction or soon to be under construction. We are building new schools. We are building new modes of transportation. We are expanding our roads. We are welcoming in new retailers that did not consider us before. Our per capita income is going up, which should help us in a lot of the traditional areas where we have struggled, like health and education. But with all of that growth and all of that good news, there are growing problems. It feels to me like domestic violence is increasing. We know from the numbers that our homicide rate is going up. Difficult to tell always about the number of homeless in our city, and we appear to have the resources to address it, but it doesn't appear to be getting better. There's a lot of people in our community that are in some level of need. On Christmas Day, we served over 2,000 people at the Red Andrews Christmas dinner. So this early takeaway for you is so much has been accomplished, yet there is so much more for us to do. Let's talk about the economy. While many large cities are still struggling to match the productivity they might have reached five years ago, our economy is performing extremely well. In fact, I don't think there's another large metro economy in the country that's able to keep up with us. We currently have the lowest unemployment rate in the United States. <clears throat> and we had the lowest rate of unemployment last month, and the month before that, and the month before that, and the month before that. In fact, we've had the lowest unemployment rate 19 of the last 23 months. Give yourself another round of applause. Our employment growth rate is twice the national average. The leading sectors are energy, uh, professional services, and retail trade. Each of those three sectors is growing at a better than 7% annual clip. Our growth in jobs is one of the largest in the country. We are set up to succeed in that area, but going forward, if we're going to continue this momentum on the job relocation front, it's going to be critical that we continue to look and prepare sites that are appropriate for businesses that are looking to relocate or expand into Oklahoma City. The city and the chamber are going to need to be actively involved in getting these sites ready so we can take advantage of all the opportunities that we're going to have. I mentioned a couple of minutes ago that our population was increasing at twice its traditional rate inside Oklahoma City's city limits. We're gaining about 1,000 new people every month. In the larger metro, double that, about 2,000 a month. Now think about that. 2,000 people a month moving into the metro area, yet our employment rate is going down. These people are obviously finding jobs when they get here. Another good indicator of a local economy can be measured by its local sales tax. That shows whether or not consumers have confidence in their own lives. It reflects if businesses are growing. Our sales tax numbers last year were in record territory, higher than they had ever been before. This year, we're up 9% over last year. Now, some of those new dollars are going to new retailers. In the past year, we've seen investments from retailers like Dave & Buster's, Anthropology. Uh, Dick's Sporting Goods, all three are new to the market, and there's more of those new retailers coming to Oklahoma City in 2013. Now, the national media is certainly recognizing what's going on in Oklahoma City. Let me take a couple of months to kind of collect some of this information and express it to you. 
of what happened in 2012 as far as outside validation. Back in January, a management consulting firm concluded that companies could save 20 to 25 percent if they headquartered in place like Oklahoma City. They placed us number two on their list of emerging mid-sized cities. Also in January, Forbes magazine looked at which cities had the best potential for real estate appreciation. They examined the entire country and placed us in their top 10. Then we heard from a national company called Career Bliss. They surveyed 43,000 citizens across the United States and asked them, are you happy with your job? We ranked number three in the entire company, a country for happiest city to work. Every year, Fortune magazine runs a poll desert determining the best places to work. Three of our corporate headquarters made the list. American Fidelity Assurance, Chesapeake, and Devon. In fact, they not only made the list of the top 100, all three of them were listed in the top 50. In Washington, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics did the math to determine how many cities had already successfully bounced back from the recession. And as of February of last year, only 13 cities in the country had reached those pre-recessionary levels. We were one of them, as you might have guessed. The Bureau also looked at which cities were building their manufacturing base. We are. We jumped 5% year to year, ranked in the top 10 in manufacturing jobs. In March came word from a publication called Business Journal. They're trying to determine which of the cities in the country are growing in the world of arts and entertainment. We're in their top 10%. In fact, they said we have 8,000 people employed in the areas of arts and entertainment. And this is proof, once again, that our commitment to arts in this community is paying large dividends in our efforts to create economic development. Also in March, an employment services firm named Manpower surveyed 18,000 employers from across the country and they came up their list for best cities for jobs. We ranked fourth. In April, the national polling firm Gallup released its job creation numbers. The number one city nationally on their list for job creation was us, Oklahoma City. In fact, it wasn't even close. Also in April, KPMG, the big accounting and auditing firm, created an index to locate the least costly city to do business. They looked at 13 mid-sized cities around the country. They named us number one. On April 30th, Garner Economics issued a report. It examined every metro economy of over a million people and looked at earnings growth. We were number one. We beat out New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, and every other big city out there. Number one in earnings growth. In May, Forbes magazine published a couple of important lists. One, best city for jobs overall, and two, best cities for recent college graduates to find a job. They placed us in the top 10 on both lists. In June, there was an article published in CNN Money magazine. Over 6,000 small businesses surveyed the number one most business-friendly city in the United States is Oklahoma City. They cited two important factors, our low cost of living and the large number of young college graduates that are choosing to live here. You know, one of our goals in the city is to attract our, and keep our young people. And in July, there's a website that I hadn't heard of, but maybe you have. It's called moving.com. And they ranked its best cities for millennials. We rank sixth in the entire country, which is not too bad. They cite our low employment rate, our cost of living, and our nightlife. I know. <laughs> it makes me want to stay up past 10 o'clock and see what's going on out there. Here's a list you may not have heard of. In August, we learned that Scientist Magazine ranked the best places to work in academia. The Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation and the University of Oklahoma Health Science Center both placed among the top 25 in the country. Now, maybe you wonder to yourself, where is the best place on earth for oil and gas investment? The answer, according to the Global Petroleum Survey conducted by the Fraser Institute, Oklahoma City. Best place on earth, I like that. Our city is also becoming more educated. New, Geog New Geography magazine measured the increases in the number of college graduates in cities across the country. We were in the top 20, and interestingly, we're four points ahead of the national average 
for college graduates. In August, Business Journal magazine issued its index for economic strait. They touted our low unemployment, our high private sector job growth. Oklahoma City, number one in August, strongest economy in the country. And by the way, we stayed number one in their poll in September and October and November. We're still waiting for the December numbers to come in. The U.S. Census Bureau has its eye on us too. They follow the growth in household income. As a state, Oklahoma finished number one in the country. Our median household income grew over 12%. We were two percentage points higher than any other state in the country. A couple of other notes. In October, ESPN ranked the top franchise in professional sports. They included all the baseball teams, all the football teams, all the basketball teams, all the hockey teams, 122 major league sports teams in all. They looked at performance on the field, but they also looked at fan appreciation, uh, the team's commitment to the community, and also the quality of the ownership group. The number one franchise in all of professional sports is the Oklahoma City Thunder. Yeah. The Green Bay Packers finished second. One final list. It's the current standings in the Western Conference. How about that? <laughs> it's a good list to be on the top two. I mentioned earlier that our revenue at City Hall comes largely from sales tax. The next obvious question you might have is, well, what do you spend it on? Well, it's a pretty easy answer for us. Two-thirds of our general fund revenue is spent on public safety. The largest amount goes to police. The second largest amount goes to the fire department. Now, over the year, we have invested in a lot of firefighting equipment, and it is starting to pay off. There's an organization that judges a fire department's ability to put out fires in rural parts of the city. The last time we went through this testing procedure was 20 years ago. Since then, we've invested in heavy water tanks. We've improved our communications. And we've also improved on the way we coordinate with the other fire departments in the, in the municipal areas. The results of the testing procedure a few months ago showed dramatic improvement in our ability to put out fires in the rural areas. What that means to you is that it should be lowering insurance rates for those who choose to live in the rural parts of the city. One other note from the fire department, we have begun construction on a new fire station in far southwest Oklahoma City, and that should help the response times out there as well. As for police, you are well aware of our commitment to fight crime. We have a policy of no tolerance for crime. But in 2012, our homicide rate went up sharply where it had been the past two years. That said, nowhere near where we were back in the late 1970s when it was at an all-time high. In 1979, we had a homicide rate of 25 per 100,000 citizens. This year, we were closer to 16. So it's a 35% betterment in the homicide rate from 1979. But simply put, regardless of the numbers, your citizens have to feel safe in their own neighborhoods. You also know of our commitment to combat gang violence. It is a priority of ours. And to that end, we have been active in three distinct areas. Number one, predictive analytics to help us understand where crime is going to occur. Number two, community engagement, which asks people inside the community to help us identify criminal activity before it escalates out of control. And number three, youth intervention, which can take on a lot of different forms. For instance, you may not be aware of a program our police department has been working on the past few years. It has to do with truancy in our schools. In 2010, the city council and I passed an ordinance that tightened up our efforts to keep kids in school, and at the same time, we entered into an agreement with the school systems that empowered everyone involved in this effort. So you may ask, how can you afford to allocate police officers to truancy when you have so many other important things going on? Well, I think the answer is this. Quite simply, if we allow a kid to drop out of school, there's a high likelihood he's going to be interacting with our police department six months from now. There's no question that a kid enrolled in school is much more likely to stay out of trouble than a kid that drops out of school. 
We've now been doing this long enough to report some results. Since 2009, we've had a total of 15,601 students that have been contacted by our police as a result of our truancy efforts. And in Oklahoma City Public Schools, we have an overall reduction in truancy of 45%. And it is not just our teenagers that we need to keep in school. There is new information regarding how important it is to get and keep our younger children in the classroom. One of our districts performed a study looking solely at how school attendance reflected scores in reading and math, and the results were amazingly consistent. At every grade level, there's a direct connection between attendance and classroom achievement. We need a longer school day, we need a longer school year, and we need to keep our kids in the classroom. As you know, the city has been very involved with the capital needs of our schools. As we wind down the Maps for Kids program, let me report on the current status. You will remember Maps for Kids is our decade-long effort to rebuild our inner city school district and at the same time provide capital funding for the suburban districts. 700 million of your tax dollars have been involved in this. It has affected over 100 schools throughout the region. And in our inner city district, we have 40 school projects that have been completed entirely. We have another 25 schools that are under construction today, and nine of those 25 are very near completion. So 2013 is gonna be a very big year for Maps for Kids. At the end of this year, there's gonna be fundamentally just two projects left. The downtown grade school, construction should begin this spring, we expect students to be in this building in the fall of 2014, and then we'll start working on the administration building, which is the final project in Maps for Kids, and we're in the process right now of helping the district determine the best site. This has also been an important year for our Teach for America effort. We currently have 130 teachers in this program. Now these teachers are young people, young men and women who have come from across the country to our community to help our kids. And the funding has come from a lot of different sources, but much of it has come from the private sector. And I want to take this opportunity to thank each of you that has been a part of this funding effort, because we all need to do everything we can to make sure that we educate our young people. Make no mistake about it, we're 12 years beyond that Maps for Kid vote. The education taking place in our classrooms is significantly better today than it used to be. And this community's commitment to education is going to be paying dividends for many, many years to come. The community is also committed to the arts. Both the Arts Festival and Opening Night were big success stories this year downtown. We should also note that the Allied Arts Campaign raised a record total, $3.25 million raised, and that goes to our local artists to help operate their programs, and also not only to entertain, but also to educate our young people about the arts. How about a round of applause for our commitment to the arts, because it is very impressive and very important to get where we want to be. Lots going on at the zoo, as always. This past year, we have several new additions. We have a new baby giraffe. This is Sergeant Pepper. And we have some new Red River piglets. <laughs> Those guys crack me up. We have a new red panda cub named KD. <laughs> and we have new pet vipers, which just goes to show you, you cannot have enough poisonous snakes in your community. <laughs> now, I understand these are an endangered species. We're, we're glad they're here, but I don't want to get too close to that one. We also have adopted a new baby chimpanzee. This chimpanzee was in the zoo in Tampa, Florida, but it needed surrogate parents, and so we brought him in here, and look, he's making himself right at home. Looks like he's fitting right in. In addition, 2013 is going to be another big year for the zoo. Where we'll be opening Stingray Bay. The stingrays are coming to Oklahoma City this year. Well, as you may know, there's a lot of national polls that ask voters if the country is headed in the right direction or the wrong direction. Last month, 
in several nationwide surveys, only 40% of Americans said that the United States was headed in the right direction. 40%. Each year, we hire a national polling firm to ask our citizens how we're doing. Is the city of Oklahoma City headed in the right direction? The numbers were very encouraging. 82% say we're headed in the right direction. And you can feel it. Obviously, not everyone is thriving in our community. And even though our employment rate is extremely low at 4%, if you're one of the 4%, things could be better for you. But while we work on our problems through our businesses and our city and county programs, through our churches and other charities, we have not stopped investing in ourselves and we have not stopped planning for future generations. We're building parks, we're building bike trails, we're building a new streetcar system, we're building hundreds of miles of new sidewalks. We have simply raised the standards of what's acceptable in the city of Oklahoma City. On the health front, you may remember a year ago, we reached our milestone when our obesity awareness campaign, known as This City is Going on a Diet, reached its goal of one million pounds lost. In the end, over 47,000 of us were involved in the process. That's over 20 pounds a piece for 47,000 people. Now, we have dozens of other cities that are trying to duplicate our efforts. The list of cities keeps growing. Uh, smaller communities in Michigan and Washington have modeled programs after ours. And amongst bigger cities, the city of Dallas, Houston, and Fort Worth are all talking to our website people about doing something about their own obesity efforts. And it's not just cities, we're also working with the entire state of North Carolina in helping them develop an obesity campaign. We're also seeing the results of our campaign on fitness starting to show up in health rankings. For instance, Men's Fitness Magazine, which annually produces a ranking of what they term the fattest cities in America, issued their list again. But this year was different. It was the very first time we weren't on it. And believe it or not, they also put out a list of the healthiest cities in America, and we were on it. We were number 23 on men's fitness list of the healthiest cities in the country. We got a long way to go, but we're heading in the right direction. As a whole, the state of Oklahoma has fared poorly in health for several years. In fact, since the 1990s, it's been getting generally worse and worse. Three reasons usually acknowledged. We have higher than average rates in poverty, in obesity, and our smoking rate is higher than the national average. But this year, the national health statistics came out. And remember, three years ago, we were 49th in the country. This year, we're 43rd. You know, again, a great sign. Not where we want to be, but we're heading in the right direction. And while we're doing a better job of taking care of ourselves, we're also doing a better job of taking care of our animals. The number of adoptions from our animal shelter totaled 7,182 this year. That's about 20 adoptions per day. Imagine the positive impact that that is having on our quality of life. And one other number I want to pass along comes from our public works department. In 2012, they repaired 81,000 potholes. <laughs> Can you imagine? That is over 200 per day. We have listened. You like smooth streets. <laughs> and in air travel, while the numbers may not be as big, the economic development it creates certainly is. At the airport, we have increased our number of direct flights to two more cities this year. And overall, air travel at the airport is up 4%. All right, let's go to MAPS 3. Let me give you an update. As you know, we have seven citizen-led committees that are tasked with providing direction on the projects. They make recommendations to the MAPS 3 Citizen Advisory Board, and then that group makes recommendations that go to the City Council. As you know, with the MAPS model, we pay for these projects after we've collected the money, so there's no debt. And so it takes a while for that penny to be collected and accumulated and then spent. It should be a very interesting process over the next 10 years. But here's a status report on the projects. Starting with the Senior Health and Wellness Centers, expect four of these facilities to be built. We currently have a request for proposals on the street. Multiple groups have indicated to us they intend to respond. It's possible we could be in the design stage here by the end of the year in our first center. The jogging and biking trail committee is 
acquiring land for the river trail that's going to connect the Oklahoma River with the trail at Lake Overholzer. That design is nearing completion. Construction should begin here in 2013. The sidewalks that come with MAPS 3 are going to be built in two phases. The subcommittee has now completed its work on developing the master plan. The design for the first half of the sidewalks is underway. Overall, hundreds of miles of sidewalks are coming to Oklahoma City. Some of it is from MAPS 3, some of it is from Project 180, a lot of it is from the bond issue that was passed in 2007. The convention center is the biggest project. The site has been selected. We are in nego negotiations to buy the property. And we're also having a strong coordinated effort between the people that are working on the convention center and those that are also working on the park and the boulevard and the streetcar. The streetcar subcommittee has been very busy. The Santa Fe station has been selected as the site of the multimodal hub. The purchase of that property is underway. Engineers are analyzing the proposed route and looking at the best money available, best use of the money available. Now, the subcommittee working on the downtown park is also making good progress. The phase one improvements will soon be in design. Beautiful. It'd be nice to see this park opening in the next few years, just south of here. On the river, construction has begun on the lighting aspects. We'll have the only lighted rowing course in the world. The lights have been erected. The whitewater facility and the windscreen are currently in the design phase. And finally, at the fairgrounds, we're building a huge expo center, $60 million largely spent on the expo center. That's also uh, in the process of selecting the architect, and that design will be coming forth very, very soon. Also in the last year, Project 180 moved forward. Here's some numbers. Nearly four miles of downtown streets have now been completely redesigned and completed. We built 13 new intersections, all new traffic signals and crosswalks. Also, as a part of Project 180, we have planted 863 trees downtown. And there's a lot of new lights associated with Project 180. There's 357 lights that are coming to help it to help pedestrians maneuver through the city. And then there's 175 new lights that have been installed for vehicles. More to come. Project 180 is not done. We're going to be working on Park Avenue and Kerr Avenue and E.K. Gaylord and some other streets. We've also had some major projects that were completed in the past year. The improvements at the Chesapeake Energy Arena are now finished. Coupled with the practice arena that was built for the Thunder, this fundamentally completes the 2008 Big League City Initiative that was so instrumental in us getting the permanent NBA team. We also finished the Oklahoma City Skydance Bridge. It's been honored nationally. An organization called Americans for the Arts named it one of the top 50 public arts projects in the country. <clears throat> Good news also this week from the Science Museum of Oklahoma. They just announced a $12 million grant from the Reynolds Foundation, which sets them up well for a huge addition to their building in the Adventure District. This new exhibit is going to help our children learn more about science. It also should allow them to learn more about technology and engineering and math. And in our efforts to stay ahead of the need of downtown parking, we're about to break ground on a 10-story parking garage between Walker and Hudson near City Hall. It will create another 800 parking spaces downtown. The demand keeps growing. While I'm, I'm up here, how about a round of applause for the totality of what the Devon Tower has meant for the city. It's, uh, it, if you're like me, it still takes your breath away every time you look at it and you notice how it's impacted the skyline and also uh, done so much to, to consolidate that workforce and to continue to build on the quality of life that that has uh, created for us. Uh, you know, it's going to be hard for 2013 to match 2012, but I have a feeling you all are not going to let me down. Thank you so much for what you're doing in the city. You are making this a great place to live and to work. Mom, your new carpet looks great. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm so inspired by that. Thank you, Godspeed, and God bless you all. And thank you for joining us here on the Mayor's Magazine. This month's episode was a large segment 
of the State of the City Address, which was given at the Cox Convention Center on January 24th of 2013. Those of you who were in attendance, thank you for coming. And those of you that were watching here on Channel 20, thank you for your time. And thank you also for making Oklahoma City such a wonderful place to live. We'll see you next month on The Mayor's Magazine.